Hi Aries, thanks for showing up to watch this video. So this is for the month of January 2018 and it's your love reading whether you're single or you're coupled. So this is for Aries Sun, Moon, Rising, or Venus. This is also if you're spying on an Aries. Personally, I think your moon sign is going to resonate the best. So if you don't know your moon sign, there's a link in the description box below. Okay, so um, this reading is going to have a little bit more detail in it or um, like kind of coaching to help you find the love that you want than typical and the reason being is um, as of the 1st of January, it's the 3rd now, I have been waking up every morning with Ed Sheeran songs in my head. Not the heartbreak ones, not like, oh, you're happier with some other guy and I miss you. No, it's the ones like, you're perfect and I love you so much and let's get married and I'm so glad I found you. So I feel like this is gonna be a really powerful month for love for a lot of people. So here we go. Um, before I was asking a question, these things just leapt straight out the deck. So we're going to start with those. Um, so there, maybe this is a message for one person. I don't know. But what it's saying is um, that there is some defensive energy here. Not being able to own your own shit. Making excuses when it comes to lovers as well as to um, routine, commitment, day-to-day -day life. So whoever that's for... Go ahead and own your own shit. There's an Aries in my life, and um, I think I know who that is, and I think I know who that's for. Not that they'll watch this, but if they do, see you. <laughs> okay, so what do you want in love in January? Okay, this is interesting, because maybe that message wasn't for that one person. Maybe this is for Aries in general. What it's saying is, you know what, you might be starting off January feeling like not so strong in the love department, um, whether that's in your relationship, if you're coupled or if you're single, like, oh man, fuck, what am I going to do now? Um, and so you're excited and like enthused to go out and like create some passion and some joy and like find a relationship or like spark up a old relationship, make it more, you know, thrilling. But what it's saying is that same defensive energy here is a problem. It's a problem. So if you're in a coupled relationship and your partner's like, look, this thing that you're doing really bothers me or it really hurts my feelings. Instead of saying, you know what, I'm sorry. Let me figure out if there's a way that I can um, help you feel better about this. You might be like, okay, but here's the shit that you do too. And putting that off on them. Now, if you're single, this is more like, um, you know, you're going out there, you're trying to meet new people, and then um, perhaps they say something like, oh, um, you know, I'm not sure if this is right for me, like after you have your first Tinder date or whatever, and then you're like, yeah, well, you're ugly. <laughs> that kind of a thing. This energy is not serving you, okay? Um, so, so how do we get past it? They say, examine why, where these behaviors are coming from and why they're, why you have them right now. Okay, not to put the blame on you like, hey, your love life sucks because of you. No, like two people in any relationship are going to contribute to this. But this is something that you're tasked to, to work on in January. Some of you have probably already, you know, worked on this a lot. And for some of you, this is a totally new concept. So that's the problem with the general reading. Um, but they're saying, you know, thinking about your past, like, where could you have done better and where didn't you own your own shit? Like, where did you displace this? That's what they want you to learn from so that you can change that behavior moving forwards. Um, they say it's going to take time and you have to have patience and forgiveness of yourself as well as with other people. Okay, so are you ready for love? They're like, well, yeah. You're ready for change. And if you're able to make these changes, if you're able to really take this message to heart instead of just like shutting this video off and giving it a thumbs down because you feel like I'm bagging on you, because I'm not. I'm here to actually help you grow and bring love into your life. Well then, absolutely. You will have good luck in a lot of areas of your life, but especially in love, especially with a partner. And this partner is actually like a good luck charm for you. So good. Okay. Um, sidebar, that makes me think, have you ever heard, I'm conscious of this because I'm a Leo, but I've heard that, um, Leo wives 
are really, really good for business. Like, even if they don't show up to business dinners and stuff, just having them helps you become more successful. I don't think Leos and Aries are necessarily compatible. But there's something, it's, it's an element like that, okay? Like your partner brings you good luck. Maybe they bring you um, a new group of people to network with or something like that. But this luck goes everywhere. And it's because of the loving bond and connection that you'll have. Okay. So what are the subconscious energies that um, are coming up in the month of January that you'll have to work through? in order to have more love in your life. And they say, um, you just kind of have to let go and have faith, like that childlike faith, that everything's working out the way it's supposed to. You know, like you don't worry as a child, um, you know, like as a five-year-old, if there's gonna, if you're gonna have a place to live, like that's something your parents do. Like you just have this faith that you're gonna like wake up in your bed every day, like you're gonna have a place to sleep. You don't have to see how the universe is bringing you something how they're bringing you someone, how they're bringing you love and joy and contentment. You just have to trust that they are. You have to go with the flow. Now, they're saying that um, you. a lot of you have probably gone through some recent discord, um, disharmony, um, problems, like breakups, things like that. Uh, communication chasms, especially in relationships or with other people. And they say it's not something that you should be... Um, I'm, I'm, so I'm not saying stuff your feelings, but it's not something you should be talking about a lot right now with other people or really focusing on applying your mental focus to. And the reason being is because then you're attracting that into your life and that's super unhealthy for you right now. What you want to be working on is your day-to-day -day balance, on your work-life balance and how... Um, like establishing good routines and juggling everything because you're totally capable of that. Now... Um, what are your current blocks and how do we get past them? So the current blocks are that, like, when you look at the past, when you look at um, past things that have happened in your current relationship or in previous relationships, you're not looking at it positively, okay? So, I mean, not every relationship is perfect. Everybody's going to have some shit in their past, right? But what they're saying here is if you're looking at that shit and you're focused on how shitty it was, well, then you're attracting more shit into your life, really. So what you want to do is you want to either focus on the things that were good or you want to focus on everything that was shitty and the good thing that you learned from it, okay? Because this is going to sound stupid, but nothing that happens to you, like, you know how they say, um, why do bad things happen to good people? They don't. And I know that sounds crazy, but they don't. The thing is, is... Um, Good things happen to good people. Good things happen to bad people. Good things happen, okay? And sometimes things feel bad or they hurt, but they teach us something, okay? There's good that comes out of every situation. So, like, for example, um, my mom died last month, and that was really hard. And how could I frame that as good? Okay, well, you know, you could do the typical things like, she's not suffering anymore. She's in heaven now. Whether you believe that or not, like, it kind of sounds like a cop-out, right? But, but the good things here are that um, it causes me to cherish my sister more. It really does. Um, it causes me to think about relationships, you know, and families and, like, um, do I want to really engage in battles or do I sometimes want to shut my mouth and just, you know, let things be? There's good lessons that come out of these things. Um, another good les lesson was friendships and like that I need to really value them because due to the generosity of many friends, my sister and I could be with my mom um, every second until she died for two weeks. So, I mean, there's good things that happen when things feel bad. Does that make sense? Okay. So they're like, um, the other thing, the other kind of subconscious block and stuff like that is um, like avoiding your feelings. You're going to want to really kind of start to do them one at a time, you know? Like as you're thinking about these past things and trying to find the blessing in them, do them one at a time so you're not overwhelmed and become kind of depressed. And then patience is the other thing. You have to have patience because um, everything's going to happen in divine timing. But for you, the big changes that were promised here in this love reading that are coming for you are going to come as soon as we get through all of this emotional work that we need to do, okay?
Um, so how can you ready your heart for love in the month of January? They say, well, your energy is a little bit all over the place. You know, you're trying to decide what is the most important thing for you right now. And it's causing more confusion and it's making you it hard for you to manifest something that you want. So if you realize that the things that you've let go of, you know, if you've had a divorce or a breakup or anything like that, the things that you have released in 2017, if you can frame those as good, that's how you're going to open your heart to welcome in new. It's like, um, oh, it's 222 while I'm doing this reading. So I just want to tell you what that number is about. That one is about stability and balance and that everything's going to be okay. It's a divine number telling you that, um, you know, because two plus two plus two is six, which is about balance. And then twos are about with like that two pentacles we had that you can juggle everything you really can and you can ask angels for support as you do that okay so where was I going with that um so everything that you've left behind it's like you're clearing it out to create an opening that the universe will fill with something new and better okay um what can you do to ready your mind for love they're like it's not really that much <laughs> it's not really that hard for you once you get on this process of like um, clearing away those blockages and readying your heart for love um, unless you're not connected from spirit. So however it is you connect to spirit, that's what you're going to want to do. You know when you like just get in the flow of something and it's like things seem easy? That could be when you're writing or typing something. That could be when you're um, running or when you're doing yoga or when you're in prayer. Whatever it is you do to connect to spirit, keep doing that because that's going to be healing you at the same time. And then how... And so. A big thing is like to trust, you know, the universe, God, Allah, spirit, angels, whatever. How are you going to best ready your spirit for love? Okay. So they're saying um, it's not by, it's, so this is a mixed message because everyone's in a different place and that's kind of the trouble with general readings um, as opposed to like a personal reading. So they're saying some of you, not with your soulmate. And you you have to realize that, like that maybe at one point in time, you were soulmates or twin flames or whatever they say, you were destined to meet each other, to teach each other something. But now that is done and it's time to take those lessons and apply them so you can bring in something new. Okay. Now, um, they're saying this is going to be a hard thing to do. It really is. Um, because on the one hand, part of you, because you maybe used to have this kind of connection or you still haven't let go of the feeling of that sort of connection before where it felt like a soulmate relationship where you felt really bonded, like on a mental level, on an intellectual and spiritual level, they're saying um, part of you, you don't want that to go away or um, you want to bring it back. So you extend out your hand, like, come back, come back, come back. Or, hey, um, I'm willing to give you another chance, but this. And they're like, you have to be more discerning than that. And, you know, you have to be really real with yourself this month about that. They say there are really wonderful qualities about you and this month you could be a magnet for love. You could be attracting all sorts of people. People are gonna be looking at you, they're gonna find you attractive, they're gonna to wanna to get with you, but you have to make sure that you're emotionally ready or, the, or those relationships aren't gonna work out. They're like, find yourself, um, imagine yourself as successful in love. Because a lot of you, it seems like, are already starting to see success in other areas, okay? You might be um, losing weight. You might be getting sexier by the minute. You might be achieving at work, making more money, like all of these things. You have better credit now. <laughs> like it could be any of those things, um, except for in the area of love, you might not so much feel that. Or maybe sometimes some of you feel like, you know, if, if you're in a coupled relationship, that your re relationship is getting better, but it's getting better on the surface as opposed to underneath that on a deeper, more intimate level. And that's the why we have to do this work this month. Okay, so what's a positive thing that you can do for yourself this month in order to find a partner or to create more love in your existing relationships? And they say be creative. Um, like, go on adventures. Take a vacation if you can. Like, be really passionate and excited. And you can even be passionate and excited about something that's not related to your partner so long as you can include them in it in one way or another. Um, what they're saying here is that... It's going to take some time to bring this all in, 
It really is. It's going to take a lot of like emotional focus for you, which might be hard as a fire sign. Um, but they're saying if you can get excited about that, it will be much easier for you because the universe responds to our emotions. You know, that's why they say emotion, energy and motion. The energy that we're putting out is the energy we're getting back. Okay. So I'm going to switch decks here and get kind of a theme for your affirmations in order to attract this into your life. And they say awakening. So remember when I was talking about you got to figure out how to connect with spirit? That's what this is about. So affirmations in order to help you awaken and feel more connected to spirit. Um, I have been in a deep and restful sleep. So um, you could apply that in multiple ways. You know, on the meta level, it's like, um, I've been in a deep and <laughs> what is it? A deep and restful sleep in terms of like dealing with my shit, my emotional shit, like my behaviors, that kind of a thing. Um, but you can also remember that you heal as you actually sleep. And so don't get down on yourself if you're sleeping like longer hours than usual. Okay. I'm now awakening to a new world. You're creating a new reality for yourself. I may remain open to whatever unfolds. And like I was saying, you got to go with the flow because once you're connected, things are going to start flowing to you. Um, nature is coming to life all around me at the beginning of spring. So maybe this is a message that by spring, you'll be living in a whole new reality. So let's hope that's true. Love and light and see you next month. Mwah!